when did you discover that you were freakishly strong? <laughs> Bro, I don't think it sounds funny, right? Because automatically you see what I do for a living and you think, fuck, that bloke's strong. But he's Is never it, been. I thought you were one of the X-Men. <laughs> Bro, it's never been an attribute of mine that's my strong point. Even in my sport of weightlifting, if you ask any other weightlifter, is he a strong weightlifter? They'd say no. And it has always been my Achilles heel as a lifter to actually have to focus on getting stronger all the time. So it's definitely something that never came naturally to me. Yeah. And how did you get, how did you get like, what was your path into just getting into it? Was it just, were you, were you one of those insecure kids that wanted to throw weights around or how did it, how did that all come about? It's it's funny you say insecure kid because that definitely like I guess resonates with me in terms of how I got into Olympic weightlifting. And I think reflecting back on it, it was definitely something that would probably I was drawn to because at the time of my life when I started weightlifting, I probably was a little bit insecure. Yeah. Um, I just moved down to Devon in Ivy Bridge to start a new school, um, which was two and a half hours from Reading. I was 11 years old, so it's really? the secondary school. Oh, shit. As you can imagine, an 11 year old kid moving to a new school, not knowing anyone, I didn't have any friends. So yeah. I used to wander the corridors at lunchtime and stumbled across a weightlifting gym oh, within shit. the school. Really? So it was just a way for you to kind of fill in time you know like do you know that, that reminds me of do you know when i don't know if you do this but i've definitely done before when you walk in somewhere and you see someone that you don't particularly want to talk to so you pretend that someone's you ever do that where you pretend you're, you're where you pretend phone. someone's calling you <laughs> i do that all the time i'm like oh fuck i don't really want to talk to that guy so was that what it was like for you was it kind of just to fill in a gap of just wandering around yeah, I think, you know, for me, it was probably wanting to feel a sense of belonging at that yeah. point, you know, starting yeah. a new school. And yeah. I think that's one of the great things about about weightlifting is it does give you a sense of purpose and and belonging. And I think that that reflecting on it now was probably something that really drew me into the sport. Yeah, yeah. So did it start did it start off as like a bodybuilding thing for you or just was it quite literally straight and it just let's get strong? Rather, I was hitting snatches first session. <laughs> Fuck off, no way. Really? <laughs> that was the first thing we did, bro. I was straight in at the deep end. It was snatch and clean and jerk at the weightlifting gym. Um, yeah. There was an Olympian weightlifter there that was the coach. And, you know, she got me straight into it first session. Wow. Dude, so, that but is shit. You can imagine what it's like now, right? When you say to someone... I do snatch and clean and jerk and they go, oh yeah, so how much do you bench? You can imagine how much worse it was 16 years ago before CrossFit was even a thing. No one had a clue what a fucking snatch was. They thought you were slang talking about fanny. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, I still do. I still do. I'm surprised you've... Mate, I'm surprised you've been that politically correct with the word fanny. Yeah. <laughs> but, mate, so was, it, was it like... Um... Have you have you quite literally been non-stop since then? Or was it, did you get to that phase where you're like 16, 17, where you're like, actually, this isn't cool? Or has it always been cool? I think the, the thing is, there definitely was that period in between 16, 17, when, you know, girlfriends come around, other temptations, parties. Stiffies, other... Stiffies keep getting in the way. Yeah, all, all of these sorts of things that happened during 16 to 18. Yeah. But by that point in my life, like, which I think is one of the things where, you know, I would pay credit to as to why I continued for so long was I already had a real sense of what I wanted to do yeah. in life. I wanted to be an Olympian. And from the age of 11, when I started, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I think when you've got a goal like that at such a young age, like nothing else was really going to deter me from what I wanted to achieve. Yeah. Amit, just bringing that up now. Did you, was it all support for you doing that? Or was there any resistance and challenge around it? Like there must have been, or was it all support for you? 
in terms of wanting to go to the Olympics, like, I'd just, say. No, like, just like, you know, like when you're telling people like you want to go to the Olympics at that age and that, surely there was people saying, fuck off, Sonny. Bro, at the end of the day, we all go, we all go through life with great dreams and expectations. And even when someone says, oh yeah, best of luck, really, they're thinking no fucking chance, you know, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. that happens to everyone in life. And I definitely think there's probably a lot of people that, that did doubt me during that period of time. Yeah. Um, thinking about it now, but I think it was just always in, in my head that that was the only thing that mattered. And yeah. I remember being sat once with, with my auntie because um, I used to play golf and weightlifting um, and do them both to a high stand at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And I was in that awkward position in my life where I had to make a decision whether I was going to do weightlifting or do golf. And I'll always remember that. I might say, do you want to be a jack of all trades yeah. and a master of none? Or yeah. you got to focus on one thing if you're actually going to achieve your goals. And, yeah. you know, I think that was the point in my life. I knew that if I was going to do that and really my dreams were going to come true, I had to put everything into that thing and what was it what was it that kind of swung the fucking swung the needle if you like towards weightlifting then bro i was still hitting fucking shanks after fucking oh. 10 years of weight 10 years ago <laughs> no i think i think the thing is deep down in in my heart of hearts i i knew that the chances of me going to become a professional golfer versus going to the Olympics. No fucker does weightlifting, so I had better odds stacked against me <laughs> than in golf. So yeah. I think I just put my money where the safer bet was. Yeah, the odds it, it is smart, smart decision. So, me, tell me about this because this is all something that's intrigued me. Like, what did you do for fucking money in that while you were trying to go after that? Because that can't have been easy. No, bro, it wasn't. And no one will, uh, no one sponsors weightlifters, but fortunately I probably found the only man in the world that does. And yeah. growing up, I, I moved out when I was 15 years old um, to move up to Bristol to try and to train at this weightlifting gym that was renowned as one of the best weightlifting gyms in the country called Empire yeah. Sports Club. And my dad's, my dad helped me move up to, to Bristol and he said for a period of time you know what well, I'll support you and whatnot but I never really had enough money to completely train full time it was yeah. always going to become a point where I needed to get um, a job and yeah. I'd probably sent out 500 letters to different businesses small businesses Nike Adidas everyone asking you know you fancy sponsoring me I'm a weightlifter and they go what the fuck's weightlifting mate and what you know that? <laughs> the answer would always be no yeah um but one one day i walked into the the car park of my gym which was in a shit hole area of bristol called st paul's mm -hmm. and there was this brand new white porsche 911 turbo s parked in the car park and i was like yeah. fuck yeah. whose car is that like i've always yeah. been into my car and yeah. i asked the coach and he said his name's jeff he's in the main gym yeah and i walked into the gym i just said to the bloke who's jeff he said i'm jeff what do you want i said fancy sponsoring me and he goes well, how much is it going to cost and everyone sort of stopped to watch the conversation go back and forth and i was like well i need to stay in bristol a couple more months to try and qualify for the olympics and i was living off 200 quid a month yeah. um so i was like well two months that's 400 quid and i thought you know what he's obviously got some money because he's driving a porsche i'll ask him for 500 yeah. and i'll get myself some new trainers Mm -hmm. And he looked at me for a minute and he goes, what, a month? And my jaw nearly hit the floor. And I went, yeah, yeah, okay then. Bearing in mind, I've been living off less than half of that. And yeah. sure enough, the next month, 500 quid went in my bank account. 